If I asked you how you were doing right now, what would you say? For most of us, it's good, pretty good, doing all right, hanging in there. Depends on the day, right? But do you actually mean it? We're talking about what you say when you talk to yourself or what you say to yourself this week. So why does that matter and what you need to do inside this episode? Here we go. Welcome back to another episode of the Your Money, Your Life podcast. I'm your host, Amy Serka. We are talking today about what you say to yourself. So if I asked you right now how you were doing, what would you say? Good, pretty good, fantastic, just all right, hanging in there, something like that, right? But do you actually mean it? We'll put on a facade for everyone. Like, look at us. We're doing this. I've accomplished this thing. But then you put the phone down and you're like, I can't believe you said that. That was so stupid. Or you turn around and you get angry and you're yelling at somebody. What's wrong with you? Why haven't you hit your sales goal? And well, I firmly believe we will never have this like 100% amazing life. This is also like, this is why we talk about unstoppable finances and being unstoppable in spite of whatever circumstances are going on. But I do believe that we can find the grace and the gratitude in our situations with yourself and those around you and genuinely arrive to a happier place consistently. When you quit... When you quit stressing about messing up all the dang time and give yourself like a little bit of space that it's okay if things don't go 100% according to plan, it, you're going to close an energy leak, okay? It's not about removing like all pressure and it's just like oh everything is no big deal I don't have to get anything done and like you're a go-getter right I don't think that you feel that that's not that's not the problem you're facing right like you're doing all these things you're showing up on social media and you're like smiling you're doing the things you're hustling here you're doing this here and like there is some aspect like there are moments when you are happy and fulfilled but I want you to have more of those moments. And I also don't want you to speak negatively to yourself outside of those moments. And this is way easier said than done. Like total transparency, something that I'm still working on, something that I think that we're going to be working on forever. Like, again, like I've said so many times, we're not perfect and I don't expect you to be. But if we can stop wasting energy beating ourselves up and asking yourself like what's wrong with you why haven't we done this or I shouldn't have said that to the kids or I shouldn't have snapped or like I needed to do this like whatever it might be like stop putting all the pressure on yourself like that because it's not that we're going to totally pull all the pressure off and you're going to live like this relaxed no pressure life like that's not I don't think that's what you want But you don't want to feel guilty. You don't want to feel that struggle and that stress and that frustration with yourself and with others, right? So we have to give ourselves a space. And there's a three-step process that I want to share with you real quick. If we've been on coaching calls before, you might have heard of it. This is going to be probably a shorter episode, even for me. But when these things are happening, when you are in this charged state, whether it's frustration with yourself, whether it's all the little itty bitty little things that are adding up, like one thing after another, one like tiny things that are going wrong and you are just at your breaking point, at your limit, or um, you're touched out. Like, just please stop touching me. <laughs> I hit that the other day. Uh, it was a challenging, we had like a day or it was one of those things where like little things were going on. Kids were a little more needy. 
the little more bickering. There was stuff that wasn't really going right with work or whatever it might be. Like just little stuff was adding up. And I'm like, I am so touched out. Please stop, please stop touching me. But when you get to that point too, we need to ask ourselves these three questions. And if you can work, walk yourself through this exercise, perfect, amazing, do it. But as always, if you've got a coach in your corner to help you to go through and look at things objectively, it's going to be that much more powerful. All right. So the first thing I want you to do in the moment, like I want you to identify what's happening, what is going on. And the way that we do this is not, you have to state it without the emotion. Okay. So right now I am sitting in my office recording at my desk, the lights on so that we have the pretty lighting, the windows, the blinds are partway open. I can kind of hear the kids in the other room, but it's not anything that's undisputable or disputable, I should say, not anything that is disputable. So being hungry, being tired, like those emotions, yes, they might be real, but might be factual, but that's not what we're talking about. Tangible things that you can look, see, feel those things. Okay. What's happening? And when we hit these moments, there are times where our subconscious mind has related it back to a time in the past, okay? So if there is fear showing up in one of these instances, or you're saying like, what's wrong with you? Why haven't you hit your sales goal? Or I don't know why you're trying. You're just going to fail again. Or one of those type of things where we're tying it to something that happened in the past, Like we have the second part is we have to ask ourselves is, is it real? Is what's going on now what happened in the past? And it's not, if you're in one of those circumstances like that, where you're blaming yourself or feeling like you're going to fail again, just because you failed in the past, because you've grown since then, the circumstances have changed, things have grown. That does not Just because you failed in the past does not mean that you're going to fail now. So if you're in that circumstances, that circumstance, the answer is no, it's not real. And if you just hit your limit from all the little things adding up, like, yes, it can be real. But regardless of which side of the beating yourself up circus you're on, is it a circus? I feel like it's kind of like a circus, right? The third part, the thing that we need to know is like, what comes next? What's your next step so that we don't stay in this spot? You have to get into momentum. So if you're beating yourself up, acknowledging the fact that what happened in the past is not the future, that's a good first step. Then what's something you can do to move forward? Maybe it's going to go make an invite to somebody. Maybe it's making a post on social media about whatever the next event is or whatever it might be. Moving forward doesn't have to be a big step. I don't want you to be like, okay, well, I have to get like 14 moving pieces going to be able to move forward. No, one step, get it done, 10 minutes. If you're overwhelmed or stressed out from like my example of being touched out, like stop touching me, I need my bubble. Then maybe it's like you go outside and you hide for 10 minutes. Now, of course, you got to make sure the kids are safe, secure, like not going to hurt themselves. If you have kids old enough to watch out for themselves, great. If not, like have everybody have quiet time, do something for you. It does not have to take a lot of bit of, lot of time, but do something to remove yourself from the situation. Because if you are sitting there telling yourself what's wrong with you, why haven't you done this? Why do you keep doing this? Like those types of things, we need to be able to speak positively to ourselves. Okay. Again, we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking to move forward. A powerful exercise for this is if somebody said to your kids, what you're saying to yourself right now, how would you feel? And when you can feel good about that, then you know you're on the right track. Again, we're not worried about perfection. This is just moving forward and being congruent with the things that we are telling others and the things that we're telling ourselves moving forward. This is like authenticity shows up. No, I don't need you to like air every single part of your dirty laundry. You can have tough times. You can have tough moments. And if you're in one of those, like totally own it. That's fine. 
It does not mean that we have to put everything out, like share all of the dirty laundry. We can just say like, hey, it's a struggle right now. Or I'm struggling with something right now. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, again, this is all a journey up and down, right? Okay, I'm going to quit rambling. We talked a lot about what you say to yourself. And trying to get to a place, I think that question there that I posed at the end was probably a good way to put a bow on this. Like, if what you're saying to yourself was said to your kids, how would you feel? And working to a place where we feel good about that and we're not beating ourselves up or asking like, what's wrong with you? Like, you're so stupid, whatever, whatever that is. Getting away from that place and moving forward and giving ourselves the grace and the gratitude and genuinely believing like what we're saying and moving forward and that three-step exercise that we talked about with when you're moving forward or when you're in one of those situations, how you can move forward is going to be so key. So me message on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you, your insights from today's episode. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening to the Your Money, Your Life podcast. Wondering what's next? When you're ready, there are different levels of support that you can use on the path to creating unstoppable finances and your unstoppable life. After all, your finances are unique and your support should be too. Ultimately, we'll create a customized plan to ditch financial struggle for good that works for you, your goals, your priorities, your life. Go to workwithamy.com to get started with one of our most popular programs, or you can book a Q&A call with me and we'll figure out what your next step should be.